Ever felt frustrated with the complexity of running Postgres on Kubernetes, like manually setting up data volumes, services, deployments, managing backups, managing the secret holding credentials, and not to even mention high availability? There's a lot of complexity in running stateful applications in Kubernetes. This is especially true if you're aiming to achieve this in a declarative GitOps way. But there is a way to simplify this process, to deploy Postgres declaratively and have a production-ready setup with just a few lines of YAML. That's where the crunchy data Postgres operator comes in. In this video, let's deploy Postgres declaratively, creating a production-ready setup on Kubernetes. To follow along, you need to have a Kubernetes cluster running. On my local machine, I will be using Rancher Desktop. You can check out my video on that. Alternatively, you could run Kubernetes in the cloud or even in your own home lab. And wouldn't you know it, I have a video on how to easily set up a Kubernetes home lab as well. But let's get back to the task at hand. Installing PGO is not that complicated. However, it presented a couple of challenges when I initially started out, especially since I was a beginner in Kubernetes back then. So I aim to simplify this process for you. To help us out, Crunchy Data has prepared a GitHub repo with code examples, as well as a quick start guide. You can find the links to both of these in the description. First, let's clone that repository locally and see what's inside. There are a couple ways to install PGO, or as a matter of fact, most things in Kubernetes. One is through Helm and the other one is through Customize. I will use Customize, which is the closest thing to native Kubernetes manifest and I believe the easiest way to figure out what exactly you are installing. I want to check out the folder conveniently named install. And yet again, there are a couple of ways of installing PGO. One is a single namespace install where PGO will manage Postgres instances in well a single namespace. And the other one is a cluster wide installation where PGO can manage Postgres instances in, in any namespace in the cluster. The main difference is in the permission you give PGO within your cluster. This type of cluster wide operator is important and we'll see that later on when I talk about the interesting topic of platform development. The cluster-wide installation manifest can be found in the default folder. Here we can check the manifest file. It references a bunch of other manifests, but we can understand what it's trying to do. First, it's trying to install a CRD or a custom resource definition, which is how you extend the Kubernetes API. It also applies some role-based access control and something called the manager, which is just a deployment. This will result in a pod that's running an image with the code that makes all of this possible. Okay, let's try to apply this manifest. kubectl apply dash k, the dash k is for customize and here we get the first error. The annotation is too long. Now, I spent a bunch of time researching this and what you have to do is something called a server-side apply. I also added the force conflicts flag, but well, that's optional. And that's it. We now have the crunchy data Postgres operator installed. We'll talk about what an operator is a bit later, but first let's see it in action. So the idea is with a few lines of YAML, we can tell PGO exactly what kind of Postgres cluster we want. No need for manual configuration or complex scripting. Let's see what we can do here. We can create a resource of kind Postgres cluster. This was defined in that custom resource definition we installed earlier. Then we can define the Postgres image and version to use. In this case, we are using Postgres version 16. We can have multiple instances. For example, here there is a single instance named instance one, and we can allocate some storage. In this case, one gigabyte should be enough. Another required field to have a minimal Postgres cluster is the backup configuration. And it's nice that they force you to have at least minimal backup configuration. Here we can leave this as default. Again, we are going to allocate some disk space for the backups, but in a production scenario, the backups should be at least stored on a separate drive or even better offsite or in the cloud. There are a bunch of additional options you can configure here for the backups, but after we apply this manifest, PGO will take care of periodically backing up automatically. Okay, let's apply this minimal Postgres cluster manifest. As you can see, there are a few pods that started. You can see one pod that is for the Postgres instance. There is also a backup job that ran immediately and now it's stopped. It also created some Kubernetes services so that you can connect to this Postgres instance. 
Speaking of connecting to Postgres, one of the best things about this operator is that it manages credentials in Kubernetes secrets automatically. You should see here a secret for each user configured for the database. In this case, there is a user named Hippo. Let's see what's stored inside one of these secrets. A few properties, basically everything you need to successfully connect to the database. No need to manually configure secrets, this is all done for us. Actually, let me show you how easy it is to just create a new user and the database. There is a user's key in the manifest and we can give it a username, we can specify the database this new user has access to and the nice thing is that if the database doesn't exist, PGO will create it. Let's call it testdb and we can give this new user super user access. Now it's as simple as reapplying this manifest and there we go, a new secret has been created for us. This new user has credentials, but more importantly, behind the scenes, all the required operations were done for us, creating the database, creating the user, managing the user's access to this database and so on. And the beauty of it all is that it's all declarative. Now, I'd really love to test all of this in a visual way. If only there was a user interface to see what's going on in a Postgres database. That's right, PGO can also manage a PG admin installation for us. Let's check out the manifest for that. As you can see, this is the other custom resource that this operator installed and it's the kind PG admin. Let's just apply this example manifest and we can see a pod for PG admin was created. Let's port forward and open it in a browser. There is a convention on how the credentials are generated for PG admin. You can find that in the docs, but I believe these credentials are also stored in the community secret. And yes, see here is the secret for PG admin credentials. So these are the credentials for the PG admin UI. Now we need the credential for the Postgres instance we want to connect to. Let's connect to the instance we created earlier. Since this user is a super user, it has access to all the databases. And there we go. That was super easy. I almost forgot. Here is how easily you can add high availability to your Postgres cluster. You just use this property to adjust the number of replicas you want up or down. It really can't get any easier than that. So let's talk a bit about what a Kubernetes operator actually is. Kubernetes is great at managing stateless applications. It has everything you need out of the box. But stateful applications like Postgres SQL, which store persistent data and require special care and procedures to run, well, that's a bit more tricky. So this is where Kubernetes operators come in. They are software extensions that enhance Kubernetes capabilities, specifically designed to automate the management of complex stateful applications like a Postgres database. So like we saw earlier in the video, operators extend the Kubernetes API with new types of resources. In this case, we had the resources called Postgres cluster and PG admin. The operators usually run in the background and can handle certain administrative tasks for us. For example, they can scale Postgres instances, they can automate backups and restores, but most importantly, they can do so in a declarative way. This leads me to the other topic I wanted to cover in this video and that is platform development. This is a concept where you have a platform team that manages this Kubernetes cluster that has all of these operators installed and this platform then enables self-provisioning and managing of resources without complex scripting or manual actions. It's all done through configuration in a self-service way. So you can imagine a bunch of use cases for this, spinning up new environments like staging or test environments, accelerating development cycles, increased productivity, faster iteration on ideas, and not in the least, implementing GitOps principles ensuring consistency, repeatability, and auditability. So there you have it, Crunchy Data Postgres Operator takes the complexity out of running Postgres on Kubernetes. Head over to their GitHub page and give it a try. I'd love to hear about your experiences with it in the comments. See you next time.